scheduled Berlin Select Board to order. To my far left is Justin Lawrence, uh, Flo Smith, to my right is Jeremy Hansen, and Angelina Capron. I am Brad Town, and additions or changes to the agenda? I have one item I'd like to add. It's in regard to Green Mountain Power cutting ash trees. Budget status report and delinquent notices as of November 15th to the select board. Uh, also, if you know, as you probably noticed, uh, I paid for that truck from Clark's, and that is a truck that we can get a loan for. Now we're going to go to the Community uh, National Bank. I had asked for them what the rate would be, and that was like six, five months ago, and they gave me a rate of 2.05 percent, and that was good for two months. So I've asked them again to give me the rate because it might not be 2.05%, but I will let you know what the rate, and I, I'm assuming it's going to be very close to that, but I can't tell you it's going to be that exact. So before I order the paperwork uh, for the loan, I will let you know, I should, I will definitely have the answer for the next meeting. We had agreed to pay for the truck when it came in, the Greenwood Clark was to pay for the truck. They are sending it over to Fairfields to be outfitted, and they will, um, take care of the bill with Fairfield and we just pay the total. So the 155 was the total which considers our trade and, and one of the advantages for doing that deal is we got to keep our current truck and I remember the winter we were short of truck <laughs> yeah, <that's not> <laughs> and it wasn't good. So uh, it is at Fairfield's right now and it should be ready Shortly. What happened to the other supplier? Um, they used to go to the one in Barry, Tenko. Tenko. What happened to them? And they moved. They're still in they're business. They're up in Barrytown, I think. Yeah, they're up, in, they're up in the industrial park. Um, I honestly don't know. I think it's because before it was kind of like we bought the truck and then we sent it over to Tenko yeah. and we dealt directly with Tenko, whereas mm -hmm. now the um, Clark deals with uh, getting it out. But Tenco and HP are owned by the same company. Oh, okay. Right. So that we're not dissing them. That's good. That's all good. Okay. Thank okay, you, Diane. Diane. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. And people are still Thanks. looking at them. Um, yes. Thank you, Diane. John Oliski. We have, John will be in to talk to you about the, um, I told the 715, so that's probably why he's not here yet. He's going to, he is, he works with the emergency management team. He wants to talk to you about disaster plans for pets um, as part of a CD DART call. So he will be in momentarily. Okay. Uh, so we'll hold that for a little bit. He's the last sec. He's at the last sec. Yeah. John? John, yeah. <laughs> I would call him by his first name. There you go. Um, there okay. he is now. Yeah. We were talking about you. Did you hear us? Come right yeah. out. Here's where we're in. Is it over here? Of course. Sure. Yeah. Great. You can bring him in the middle if you'd like. Or... Whatever works. Good um, evening. Good evening. I was just coming over from a board meeting. <laughs> the CV Dark board meeting. And as I just mentioned, John is coming in to talk to you about this. Um, Disaster plan for pets, CB Dart, and um, he'd like to tell you about it. I have he provided this brochure that I've handed to you that tells you a little bit more about it. Yeah, the brochure is on. basically for your own use in terms of your own pets and your own home situation. I've got more giveaways here, 
uh, that explain what we're into. Okay, so that's um, CV DART is the Central Vermont Disaster Animal Response Team. We're the local chapter of the Vermont Disaster Animal Response Team, which is a statewide organization. So we're the ones that would handle the uh, towns in this area. And to give you some information on that, I've got some cards that show our towns. Yeah, that's just that's Okay, so what do we do? <clears throat> Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans. And what happened was there were people that were flooded and isolated that would not leave their homes because they would have to leave their pets behind. So they didn't leave, and some of them died as a consequence. So the federal government passed a law that said that municipalities and states have to plan for how you're going to deal with pets in disasters. It's called, it's called pets. That's the name of the law. And that's inside this brochure on the, on the bottom part of that first page there. Mm -hmm. So that puts a burden on local municipalities and communities to say, so how are we going to handle pets in a disaster. Let's say we have flooding and people are, 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 are evacuated from their homes. They can't go to a Red Cross shelter because Red Cross does not allow pets in their shelter. So what we do as CV DART is we set up the shelter for the animals for the pets. So the people can be in a Red Cross shelter and we're looking after the animals that came with them. And so that's, that's, what, that's really one of our primary tasks. <clears throat> what does that involve? That involves having people that are skilled in terms of animal handling, having a system that's set up to deal with all sorts of animals that might show up, dogs, cats, ferrets, hamsters, snakes, who knows what. So what we're looking for, um, and the card will show you the, the towns that are involved. We're totally a volunteer organization. Okay, we formed back in uh, 2017. We're one of the most active chapters. I'm not going to say we are the most active, but we are one of the more active chapters of the disaster animal response teams that are out there. In fact, we, we've got some members coming from the other teams because they're not doing much of anything as, as of yet. And we're, we're sort of just going bowling right ahead and, and charging ahead to get organized to be ready for the next disaster. And what we would do in a disaster is, in Barrie, uh, the BOR, the ice rink, that building would be used as an animal shelter. We were going to be in, in the auditorium underneath on the bottom, but uh, the Medical Reserve Corps has first dibs on that in case they need to hand out medicines or whatever or deal with that. So. They moved us over to the BOR, and we've been there several times now to say, okay, how would we lay out the BOR in terms of where would we put the dogs, where would we put the cats, where would the vet be, because you have to have a vet or a vet assistant. Um, so there's all these things that are involved with setting up a shelter and then making sure that all the animals are taken care of properly, are medicated properly, because some of them, like my dog, quite a few meds right now as an older dog. So you have to really account for all that um, stuff. And uh, what we're doing as a team, part of what we're doing as a team is trying to get at funding because we have no source of funding. In fact, the VDART, the, the Vermont organization, will actually expect us to contribute to their, their, their operations. So we have to look for funding from our local <coughs> communities and also local businesses. And we've been able to get some funding from, uh, like, say, uh, National Life, for instance. But we're looking for the municipalities to maybe contribute a little bit, of and, and a little bit from each one adds up to something that works for us in terms of 
food supplies, because you have to really buy the food then and there. You can't really store it. The food doesn't last. <coughs> Uh, medical supplies, cleaning supplies, you'd be surprised how much is involved in terms of cleaning out the cages and taking care of all that. And, and again, this is all volunteer labor, so we need the source of funding to help us get these shelters running when we need them. And it's all about preparedness. We're all we're trying to get <coughs> ahead of the game, and if, if something happens, ice storm or whatever, we, Red Cross opens up, we open up. We're ready to go. Do you have a budget, John? Yeah, I anticipated that question. <laughs> and this is what they gave me. I'm not the, I'm not the financial person. That's but, fine. But uh, this is, I can pass this around if you want to take a look. We have a trailer. We have, uh, you know, it's, a, it's got all our supplies in it. it. It used to belong to the CERT team. Do you remember the CERT? Yes. The, yeah. I used to be a member of the CERT team. The local CERT team pretty much dissolved because of... Uh, too many requirements, possibly by the overarching. Uh, so is that saying that twenty-two hundred dollars is your annual budget? I'm not sure. I'd have to look at it. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I just got that tonight because I knew you were. Someone was going to ask. Uh, we don't. The budget amounts there are just. I think they're they're they don't it, it, uh, they don't take into account running a shelter. You know, this is just to keep us going, maybe. Mm -hmm. But you need the extra funding, or you need it on hand so you can go in and, and buy the, the food and whatever you need, the medicines, whatever you need, uh, when the time occurs. I'd have to take a look at it. This is, this is an annual budget. from the, It says July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. So that would reflect an entire year. So what we're what we're looking at, you know, with the with the number, and we're not going to be able to hit every town, or every town will not contribute. Or some towns you have to get so many signatures to get on the ballot to get funding. What we're looking for is something in the range of, you know, 150 to 250 per town. It's, I, it's, I know that you have worked with the emergency management team. Yeah, I, I attend their meetings on a regular um, basis, which is where I met you. Um, and have you talked to them about this program? I've been I've been the sort of the the, uh, the CV dart liaison, so I've been going to their meetings. They're aware of our of our program. It's a question of there's a, there's a regional disaster, and then everybody goes to the BOR. It could be a localized problem that would just affect maybe Berlin. Then you'd have to have your own sure. shelter, and then we would assist in terms of maybe training in terms of how you would handle animals. And stuff. That's that's the that's what we we sort of look at. We're looking at people being self-reliant in terms of a disaster, so that if it just affected one or two towns, adjacent towns, you could you could handle it yourself. Whereas if it's a, a central Vermont problem, then the Red Cross shelter opens up. Right now, I'm not aware of what shelter you would use to uh, handle people or animals. I know Wanda has, has yeah. been working on that with the school. I'm yeah. not sure they want animals in the school. Uh, so I doubt it. these yeah. are things that have to be worked out yeah. and, and thought about yeah. uh, if you're going to comply with that, that Pets Act. I was just thinking it was an emergency type thing. Right. Um, I'm, I don't know. Uh, see what else I covered. We, uh, you should be aware that we, we fall under that ICS program, you know, the, yes. the, the, that structure. And that's, that's how we would operate in case. So we all have, we all have had to take training, you know, in, in, the, in the various courses. That's part of our, mm -hmm. part of our right. prerequisite to join the team, really. Right. And, then, and then now we're just going on training with animals and handling and practice shelter setups or practice uh, Animal handling and dog walking, or, or dealing with cats, or, or whatever. So we we've, we've had quite a few uh, trainings, but that just keeps going on and on because you you have to maintain preparedness there. Uh, and I guess I'll welcome any other questions you may have at this point. And then I'll have a question for you in terms of how would we go about possibly getting a small amount of funding from the town of Berlin. Well, we have twenty five hundred dollars allocated to the Humane Society. Right, uh, fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. We're not seeking to uh, compete with the human. You know, that's the last thing we no, want no, no. is but is to be taking the, from the human. The, 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 the reason I bring it up is that we, we have we have that money allocated, but it's not currently being used 
because they're, it, we're paying our animal control officers. From, I mean, if, not, if I'm understanding what you said earlier correctly. Uh, we are, um, I'm sorry. The 2500 is the animal control officer. The Humane Society is another line, mm -hmm. 1500. But that's not money that we've been spending over the last several we years. We haven't happened to, no. I was thinking along the lines, normally I would say to John, go and get petitions and get on as a special appropriation, which is a, which is a process that we do. I think this is very related, in my own opinion, to the emergency management work. Whether, and to me it would make sense to fund it through emergency management, okay. um, since it's a small amount. And there's, and there's apparently an expectation of our municipalities to, to handle this. It's our, our responsibility, ultimately. Well, I think it's, I mean, I know that people would be reluctant to go into shelters if, if their pets can't. Well, it is a requirement, like you say, in terms of the, the federal government having set this requirement for your preparedness plan to include how are you going to deal with this. And we try to help you deal with that, uh, at least on a regional basis. Uh, I should say, we, we just went through a round of, of signature, attempted signature collections in some other towns like Waterbury, whatever. They were out there a few weeks ago in, in the pouring rain and trying to, it's just, it seems like it's a lot of effort for, the, for this amount of money, it's a lot of effort for very little return. Yeah. Well. So can we just bump up the emergency management line by $200? I would, it's not my choice, but I mean, not my decision, but why not? So this is required by federal law that we take and do. Then you plan for yeah. how you're going to deal with so that people can say, my dog can come with me or my cat. You don't leave. I would never leave my. <laughs> yeah. I would never leave my yeah. dog alone in a disaster. That, yeah. that dog's coming with me. I don't care. But it's just going to get in the car and we're going. That's why I thought it made go. sense to go through the emergency line. Yeah. And does that simple donation make us compliant as a town? No, I'm afraid no, not. I wouldn't think so. No, because so, even after the donation, you still have to have the shelter. Well, you have to plan. You have to have a, a, some plan, and, and so your emergency management plan would include some provision for dealing with folks that show up with animals. Yeah. And and I know in working with Tour and and Wanda and, and Bruce and and Fred, uh, that it's it's still in the works in terms of where your shelter would be and how you would how you would deal with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, they're, they're very proactive in terms of getting prepared. It's just a matter of the final details as to, okay, what are we going to do with the animals? Right. So for the, for the most part, for it to be a local thing, it would be fire. If it was a large-scale area, Washington County would be flooded for the most part. You would think that Red Cross would open up a shelter for a large scale. I'm talking about for the animals. For the animals, well, once the Red Cross opens the shelter, that sort of triggers us to open. It could be flood, could be snow, could be an ice storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could, you know, yeah. you could have a, a tropical storm. Irene come through. And yeah, but I was just trying to think that the, the to have a shelter for um, animals, you'd have to be on high ground. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're looking. Currently, we're looking at like the Mad River Valley as part of our coverage. Yeah. Good chance that they'll be isolated. We couldn't even get them out of there. So they, we're going to have to set up sort of a, a satellite system, some, you know, cache of equipment yeah. and supplies there so that in case of disaster, they can be self reliant on those supplies. But here, you're on fairly high. <laughs> it's, it's, Berlin is pretty up there. So yeah, speak for yourself. Well, <laughs> I know I'm up on a hill next to Hubbard yeah. Park. If if it floods, yeah. uh, there's going to be a lot the of people of in trouble before trouble. they get yeah. to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> did you say that the shelter was in Barrie at the <laughs> Civic Center? It's right? the BOR. It's the, BOR? It's the it's the uh, I was getting confused. Up it's there. the ice rink. Yeah, okay. think of it. The ice yeah. rink. The BOR is yeah. outdoor recreation. I bet they covered it. I guess so. It's <laughs> okay. I think that's a, the, the historical name. Right? So what are they asking for us to do to be compliant? What, are, what exactly are they asking for? For us to say, okay, we're going to tell well, everybody in town that... No, it's my understanding that it's part of your plan. So I know the, the, your, your emergency management yeah. people have a plan to deal with, you know, how they would set up and how they would communicate and 
they would have a plan as far as where the shelter would be, and as people come, they would be able to refer those with animals to John's group. And, and if if you had a place here, if it's re if it's a if it's a an area wide, you know, if it goes beyond Berlin and it's it's multiple towns, then we would set up the shelter. We're not going to set up the shelter. Set up the shelter for a single town. But unlikely because we're across. You'd be Berlin. somewhere, in other words. Yeah, the idea is yeah. to is to think about where can we put pets and people ahead of time, mm -hmm. right? So if the school is where you're going to put the people, but then the school says we don't want animals there, then you have to say, okay, where are we going to put the animals? Mm -hmm. you, got, you got the people handled, now where in town is there a space that we could set up, um, you know, we have, uh, and we have equipment like uh, cages and things to keep the, we, you're going to have to put the dogs and cats in, in separate areas, plus in cages to control, take care of them, feed them, etc. That's what's going to happen. They're not going to be loose in an area. They're going to all be uh, isolated in cages. and. So your mission is, though, to get a donation from the town. That's my mission here tonight. Yeah. That's true. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's my yeah. true mission. <laughs> <laughs> and you're looking for $20? Or? Something in that. It was a 150 to 250 for, for Berlin. We figured that would be a reasonable amount. Yeah. Uh, we may look for more in, in some bigger towns. So if we build this into our budget, I would think it sounds to me like a budget item. Otherwise, I would have said to John, you've got to go out and get a hundred names and go through the process to get on the ballot. And that's what we're figuring is, is a, a lot of work for not a lot of reward in terms of getting those, those names. Because we started doing, we tried doing that already and it's not working out too well. Have you looked through the state um, in terms of like the BT Shares program and getting a code number where when people make donations? Uh -huh. It might be something to think about yeah. given. Yeah, because I used to contribute to BT Shares when I was at the state. So I right. yeah, and you had all those listed. Exactly. And you, could pick the, you could pick the ones. It would be you worthwhile to, to look yeah, into to that. see if we can get listed. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if B Dart's on there or not. If this, if the, if the, if the, the master group, the, the head group is on there, then they probably wouldn't want us on there also, but mm -hmm. I can look into that. Worth looking into. Great idea. I know we're going to be approaching um, some businesses for contributions, mm -hmm. uh, maybe either contributions in terms of cash or in terms of uh, supplies, for mm -hmm. instance. Uh, maybe set up some MOUs with some, some places so that we, we, don't, we can tur turn to them when we need and then just be ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all part of the preparedness. So I'll make a note of that BT share. Some places will also reach out and ask other towns to match other towns. You know, sort of like Berlin has done this. Will you match it? Well, yeah, and and once we get a couple of towns going, we'll probably mm -hmm. mention the fact. Oh, did you know Berlin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Depends how much they're willing to give. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking. I'll be. I live in Montpelier, so I'll be looking to Montpelier for. Uh, from assistance. I know they have a different system where you get in a, a major list of, of all the charitable organizations you get in there and then they try to pass that all as one one piece. Yeah, so I, I still think you could make the argument to Montpelier that this because this is a an obligation of the municipality, they should they ought to be funding it directly rather than thinking of of P D Dart or V Dart as a separate or C V Dart rather as a separate um, organization who's just doing other other stuff out there. I, yeah, it's, it's it's, we're, we're trying to help you guys comply with the federal requirements, which not a lot of municipalities, well, I would hope more of them are aware of it now. I'm not sure if you guys were aware of that. So maybe it's something is news to you, but th there's a law out there that says that, and, mm -hmm. and we're just trying to be a piece of that, of, of that compliance, basically. My next question is, when are you expecting this donation? Or when are you thinking of this? Uh, well, I think I think when we went into the fundraising, we thought if we had to get the, the signatures and everything, it would be by town meeting day, kind of. Kind because of the budget we're working on now begins July one of, of two thousand one. Uh, twenty oh, twenty. Right. Yeah. Well, so uh, we'll take it when we can get it. You know, because we're going to be looking at all the sources, so it all adds up. Is it? Would it be a recurring item? 
Is that a possibility? If we put it in within the budget. Usually, if it yeah, gets in. Uh, that's, that would be great if it could be, you know, that's what we're really shooting for from the municipalities. Get, get it in as a recurring item of, of, of an amount, like let's say 200. If you add up a bunch of these municipalities that are on that, on that card, mm -hmm. that, that gives us a good source of annual income to, uh, to be able to uh, uh, fund what needs will occur. Um, did I not pass around enough of those? He's oh, that's okay. on the board. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, you don't pass. <laughs> 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 did you get this one, Dave? Uh, no. So I guess I'm asking the board if you want me to include it in the emergency management line. I would. I think it's, I, think, I mean, if, the, if it's mandated, you might just as well okay. mm -hmm. get ahead of it. And I'll, I'll be continuing to meet with, with Wanda and Tour and, and Bruce and, and uh, Fred. Uh, there's a few other people there yeah. that I'm missing, but uh, you know, just to keep working towards preparedness there for that aspect. That's um, I was meeting with them as a CERT member for years before uh, CERT went away, and now I really got into CERT because I wanted to help animals. That, and CERT, that was one of the goals of CERT was to help deal with animals. Uh, so and your this, flyers very informational. Especially the part, since this law was enacted, pets must be included in operational plans if the state or town seeks reimbursement from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Oh, no, there you go. Calls. Yeah. That's key. <laughs> there you go. It's a worthwhile investment. It definitely yeah. is. <laughs> I commend you for your efforts. Thank you very much. So what would happen to people on farms? There was that that farm that recently lost their chickens unexpectedly in the flood. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, we would have, I, mean, would have I know with, with farm animals, uh, we can't take them into a... No, clearly. Right. right. So, but we're, we, we would uh, have a list of resources where this is where these animals could go and maybe to another farm or whatever. That's, that's all part of the planning. Uh, I know for small farm animals, we, we probably have an agreement with uh, some folks out in Washington, uh, this, the town of Washington, where they have a, a small farm operation that would be willing to take animals in an emergency. So that's, that's all part of the planning is to deal with even those animals that you can't take into the shelter. You know, I'm, I'm not sure what you would do with, with, with horses and things, you know. It, yeah, it's a good question. Well, of course, with large animals, cows, horses, that type of thing, it depends. I mean, you're not going to be able to take and pass them off to uh, another stable or another barn. Unless they can prove they have their uh, shots and things, their yeah. coggins and their yeah. Well, everything. yeah, I guess if you were if you were the recipient of those animals, you definitely yeah. would want that information. Unless you get, have some way you can take and isolate them. Right. What about border cello for dogs? I mean, is that like a? I mean, what is there? Did I see somebody have to have a proof of? Well, we would want folks to bring as much information about their pet as possible, and then if there were any questions about shots, et cetera, then those dogs, we, we would have an area that animals could be a little bit more isolated from other animals. So that's all part of it, too. Uh, we would hope to have a vet or a vet tech available so that uh, any animals that needed uh, attention could also be addressed by the vet, vet tech. And then, then there's the question of, okay, if your animal's on meds, Hopefully you brought the meds because we're not going to have a, a medical supply. The vet, yeah. the vet might have some, but we're def definitely not going to be going out to buy meds or, or be able to. So you'll have to bring your own meds for your pet. So we probably emergency management planning. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that little handout that uh, I think yeah. I, I sent uh, Dana to hand out to you folks, just in terms of your own personal yeah. thinking about these things. If you if you have a pet and The elder, John. I guess that's enough. <laughs> right. John, come July, I'll try to remember to get in touch with you, but I will need a bill from you. Okay. Um, and we can work out, but just keep that in the back of your mind because I have to have a bill to be able to pay you. Okay. So what, the, the, the bill is just like a, a form? Yes. I'll, 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 I'll even make it if you want me to. Yeah. Perfect. But I just have to have you. And that's you know. next. That's July 2005. Yeah. yeah. I'll pass that along to the rest of the board just so they'll be aware. Right. And so we're looking at $200 on a recurring basis, possibly. 
So I would yeah. say, I mean, yeah. you can probably work with that. Something just to report to the board. That's what I'm hearing. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. We appreciate you. I think you may be the first or second town that, that we've hit uh, to get these kind of con contributions. And hopefully we'll be able to get a few more. And oh, so they're not as bad as you've heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new. I'm new at this. I'm not. I've never done fundraising that much before. So <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, digging the town right away. Lucky Boardman. I think this is Lucky probably. Yeah. Right. Come on up. Lucky um, has a property on Bartlett Road. In fact, it's that courier property that is on the corner of Bartlett and Junction Road. And he is asking to um, construct an access driveway for a future home. Uh, he's worked with Tim Davis, who has been up on Bartlett Road to check site distances, etc. And Tim has said he is satisfied with the site distance. Where is this exactly, Lucky? Uh, Junction and Right at the corner. Yep, on the left. 11 hey, you, On the left, did you go up the On hill? the left, you on the Bartlett right there. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Is that, does that require culvert there? Uh, I'd imagine you should, yeah. It will. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just gotta check. So an 18 inch yeah, culvert. 18 inch. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions for Lucky? Move to approve the permit for digging within the town right of way for Lucky Boardman as presented. I second the motion. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Tom will get this to you. Um, so thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. Have a good Have evening. Good Thank you. Hello. Fire and reimbursement ordinance discussion. Come on up. Good evening. Good evening. So I think I'm gonna reel on Jeremy in this a little bit because he was um, part of the initial discussion on this. It came about because of Williamstown's recent actions and they passed a ordinance to allow, I believe it was the town, I haven't actually seen the ordinance, so you have to forgive me on that part a little bit. I believe it was the t allowing the town to bill certain services of the fire department to the people who receive the services. And I believe most of it was out of town residents. Um, so that kind of generated the thought of is this something Berlin is interested in doing? Um, they give jurisdiction to the fire chief. Say again? They give it to the fire chief. The fire chief came in force and collect. Okay. <clears throat> and the fire department, we we have thought of about this in the past. Um, if it's something that we even want to do. And I can tell you that we're of a split mind of that right now. Um, we have had it on our recent um, agendas, but we have not gotten to it to specifically address it recently at the board of directors level because we've been working on the budget and the fire truck replacement plan is where we've been pushing, putting our energies right now. Um, <clears throat> we're on, I believe we're on the agenda for December 5th where we're going to be presenting the budget that's um, that we're, fine, that we're finalizing right now. And we were expecting to address this more on December 5th than tonight, really. Um, <clears throat> but I can tell you what we do have right now, and it's been, there's two ordinances that we have, or that the town has. One is the open burning ordinance, and they've had that one for quite a while. That one allows, and it isn't technically through the fire department, that one allows the town fire wardens and the police department in conjunction to give warnings and enforce people who are doing open burning without permits or burning certain prohibited materials. 
we have that ordinance. Then we have an alarm activation ordinance that is for both the police department and fire department for the various um, alarms in, in buildings around here. Um, that one we've had for a few years. We haven't really used it and kind of have a question as to who is supposed to be billing it because the the ordinance says civil penalties shall be assessed and collected in accordance with Vermont statutes. And I'm unfamiliar with that myself. So um, since that well, we're bringing that in line with the thing we talked about. We, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we have a little bit of work to do with that. And we are, I'm going to a class the beginning of December to learn about municipal ordinances like that. Because okay. I'm not just sure whether we really have the legal right to do what's in the ordinance. Oh, okay. You know? But it would be really good. So, um, <laughs> so maybe it's good you're not using it. But anyway, yeah. um, but we, we hope to correct that. So in that um, case, we may have some modifications that have to happen to the ordinance. But, and I guess we'd certainly have to modify the ordinance, but I think it's, and you haven't, was that for false alarms? That was for um, <coughs> oh, basically false alarms. It was for alarms due to systems not being maintained or being tampered with so on and so forth and it was up to the fire chief whether it would be billed or not yes like the fire chief and the police chief respectively okay. for each okay. type of alarm system okay. and, and i think one of the motivations for, for looking at this was when the fire department responds to hazardous materials call a motor vehicle accident on the interstate um, they will go and do that work and go right back and the town of berlin through the fire department's appropriation pays for that. So re regardless of whether that's a, a Berlin resident or not, we you know, we absorb those costs, yeah. which, and, is, and which is okay. I mean, I think in a lot of cases, but. That is the, the third part we have, is we have a department policy, but it is not backed up by any ordinance. <laughs> the department policy says that we bill $250 flat fee to out of town car fires. In other words, if you're from Roxbury and you happen to have a car fire on Route 12 in Berlin, we're allowed by our policy to give you a flat $250 invoice. But And we have used it before and collected on it, but it's really an honor system um, for that case. And the same thing, we do have a hazmat building policy uh, with uh, very certain rates. And the reason we established that is because hazmat calls are expensive calls. <laughs> they take a lot of time. They take a lot of materials and um, use a lot of resources. And so we've established a billing policy for that. But again, it's still basically an honor system. You know, if the insurance company says we'll pay it, they'll pay it. If they don't want to pay it, we don't have any any stick behind it. So it's soft billing. Kind yeah. Of thing. So, and that's what Berlin has right now. Um, just for reference, I did look around in, in the neighboring towns and um, let's see, Barry City does have a fire EMS <coughs> reimbursement ordinance as well, and it's um, a little complicated. You might want to just look at it online. I found it on their website. Um, they established it in 2013, I believe, and it allows them to invoice for quite a few different services to both in-town and out-of-town residents on different circumstances. And then Middlesex has a, in 2013, they enacted an ordinance that allows them to invoice for out-of-town car accidents and for hazmat calls, is, is what uh, Middlesex has. Then you have Williamstown that just did theirs. And the only thing I was able to find with Montpelier is they have basically a, a, a nuisance alarm activation. Like if you are testing your alarm and you don't tell Montpelier um, Fire Department that you are testing the alarm and they have to go, they can give you a hundred dollar fine. <coughs> but that's the only thing Montpelier does. Is uh, Williamstown a municipal department? There, in Middlesex. All department. in Middlesex and Mont all all of them are our municipal departments. Um, that's who the ultimate report to. I was wondering about the bill on collecting of these. 
Yeah, you know, and that would be a, work and, that would be another good question is if we do decide to go forward with an ordinance of this is how is it going to work? Who does the billing? Who does the collecting? Um, it, it's it's a little different than Williamstown. So. And do you do any billing now? In my understanding, that it's soft and it, it's a, we do our own soft billing soft right now. Billing. Yeah. So people pay you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether if it's a town ordinance, it seems to me that the financial should go to the treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. my I think it would take thinking. an incredible burden off the fire yeah. department if it was done I by mean, the just, town. You've got yeah. the resources in Diane. Well, we're used to doing that. Where it's, you know, right. It's, yeah, right. we're not we're not used to doing that. Yeah. And right. If for some reason we were given authorization to do that, honestly, I would suggest we would basically look at our accounting service to do it instead of us right. and turn it to them and say, mm -hmm. you guys handle it, and, you know, we're, we're firefighters, we're not accountants. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So, so we're not the town um, ordinances. What bothers me is that if it's a town <coughs> ordinance, yeah, there is. Um, can you enforce it? And my answer would be, I'd wonder, you know, I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Can the town enforce it if their own ordinance? Yes. I, I, I think we can delegate that authority. Yeah, it I sounded mean, I, like we could by some of what Trevor said. Yeah, I mean, if we can delegate the authority of the animal control officer to another municipality, presumably we can delegate the authority to enforce fire-related things to the fire department. Mm -hmm. I mean, we already have the expectation that they're going to be doing a lot of stuff related to that anyways. <clears throat> how, many, how many motor vehicle accidents or hazmat calls or things that could conceivably land under this illegal burns. I'm just looking at some of the other. I happen to have a couple numbers right here. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the year 2018, we responded to 29 car accidents in our commercial area and another 20 car accidents in our residential area. We responded to 44 alarm activations in the commercial area and 15 activations in the residential area. We had six vehicle fires in the commercial area and four <coughs> in the residential area. Uh, in 2018, I believe we had a total of two hazmat calls. When you say commercial area, are you talking uh, just here in the corners? We we have districts, you know, for <coughs> various responses in the town, and the commercial area is basically top of the hill, Barry Montpelier Road, um, the. Highway, Montpelier Junction, that little section right through there, where you're going to find the businesses and industries. That's the commercial area. So, so that does include the throughway. Yes. yes. So I, I think something that the fire department board would probably appreciate is if there's any thoughts from the perspective of the select board whether this is something that would have any legs if the fire department board wanted to pursue it. I mean, obviously the select board and you know the town can go and put this into play with or without the help of the fire department. But um, if this is something that the fire department board ultimately decided this is something that, that we want to do, um, what do you all think about um, putting the town kind of teeth behind it? Well, I don't see any problem with it. I mean, for me, I look at it, uh, the commercial area, as he described it, uh, you're talking, um, you're talking uh, greater risk. Throughway, you know, you got cars going by, greater risk. Um, God forbid should the propane plant down by the junction catch on fire, big risk. So I would say no problems with uh, putting some sort of an ordinance uh, that would be able to help the fire department uh, answer their calls. And I think the idea too here, if it wasn't made clear, is that this, these would be billed to non-Berlin residents. The, in the discussions, We've had mo mostly informal discussions. We do feel very strongly that Berlin residents should not be getting billed because they're already paying the taxes and we have an appropriation at a town meeting day. Yep. So why are we going to bill them again? So that we do feel strongly about that. I think some of that the malicious incidents and stuff like that, I mean, I think some of it, 
Barry City does have in theirs if it's a malicious <laughs> if it's a malicious incident that they could bill a town resident for certain malicious incidents that's or the or a town business. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I wouldn't give them a blanket to whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna think about this, I would encourage you to, to go online, look at Barry Sydney's mm -hmm. Barry City's uh, ordinances on their website and you can be you can find it right there. So and the same thing from Middlesex. And you said you were something about the accounting piece going through. The well, I mean, building. I was just, Jeremy pointed out that you can um, assign who's going to be in charge of it, you know. I was just trying to save the fire department for having to do more bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and somehow we'd figure out the logistics, whether we just give them credit when we give them their stipend, that we give them every quarterly or whatever it is that they bill us. Um, or something, but again, that's not etched in stone. But we can do the billing very easily here. We have, right. the, we have the software. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, very well yeah. could be. And you do raise a good point: is to what's the Vermont statute say say about a municipal ordinance like this too? And how does it how does it work? Mm -hmm. So, what must work? And other towns have done it. Well. It, it must work, and I'm going to this class. When I will come back, I will be fully educated. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. In, 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 in a person. Is that something we should ask about now? Nimrick? Um, have you looked into, uh, as far as um, your bookkeeping, if you're going to shift it to uh, the town or Think about it. Have you looked into the cost of the Nimrick module for the town treasurer? We have not looked at that, and I honestly would not know where to look for that. That's a that's a Diane question. Yeah. The um, you know right now we use Bachelor's Associates for yeah. our accounting, and they use the software that they use. You know, so that that's kind of if things go in that direction, that's kind of a details question. Yeah. Well, there's the town of stuff on uh, was it New England Municipal yeah. New England Municipal County. Rick, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, yeah. 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 But we can. I mean, we had spoken. You asked this earlier, and Diane and I will get that information because yeah. I don't think they could get it. I don't, no, I mean, yeah. wouldn't do them any good anyway. They don't have the rest of the program. To right. Work. Yeah, it's kind mm -hmm. of you don't buy a module if you don't have the software. Yeah. Well, whatever the cost of the module, it's going to be cheaper than, than the yeah. accounts that they have there. Easy. I yeah, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, anything else? No, unless you have any other questions for me in general. But... Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you had uh, the ash tree from the Green Mountain Tower? Yes, um, and this is something that maybe you're going to need to think about unless you know, or know already. Green Mountain Power approached me and asked if we wanted to have two ash trees that are out in our yard cut when they come through. They're removing all the ash trees because of the situation Bore. with the borer. We have an ash tree just at the corner of the driveway and, and he put a ribbon around it so you'd know which one it was and of course now is not a great time to see it but that and there's another one which I haven't found where he's put the ribbon but he was curious to know if we wanted them to cut it when they were coming through. Now, is this all on Shen Road? Yes. Is it all on town property? Yes. Well, I haven't checked number tree number two, but tree number one is. Um, is it a, um, are they doing it as a maintenance for their power lines also? Yes. No problem. Yeah. No cost to the town for cutting? No. Yeah. But I've gotten in terrible trouble with trees. I bet you have. And <laughs> so I'm always, yeah. I'm always, you know, I guess if you want to just take a look at it when you 
when you How can't big are those trees? This the one out here that has the ribbon around. It's a pretty good sized tree. I mean, it would cost if you had a. Are they going to chip it, or are they just going to leave it? I honestly don't know. Yeah. Because one of the things that we when uh, Beth was here was that uh, once the tree is dead, and, and whether you burn it or, or split it or whatever, the, the it's no longer feasible for the boar to live in it. Right. So yeah. I was just wondering, I mean, if it's just going to be cut and laid there, maybe not. Mm -hmm. It'd be more important. I mean, if they're going to take it down, they should take it away. I, I could find that out. Yeah. And uh, has our tree warden or assistant tree warden weighed in on this at all? I wanted to hear what your thoughts were, and I was going to send it to Beth and see yeah. what she thought. Yeah. So oh, if there's any commercial had. value to that tree, you don't know how big it is. It's pretty good size, yeah. But of course now all the, all the mills are flooded with ash. Probably, yeah. It was a while there, it was up quite a bit up in Canada. But Make a lot of baskets. <clears throat> okay. So that was, yeah. So I, I guess if you, if you uh, I'll find out about how they're going to dispose of it. And, yeah, and I, I will check with Beth and, yeah, see, and what see what her thoughts are. Uh, let's see here. Okay, approval of select board minutes from October 17th and November 7th. I think on the November 7th ones uh, for the Economic Development Council. Said motion carried two to one. I can't carry two to one. No. <laughs> Only a smaller board. <laughs> right. So, um, so that's really three to one. Mm -hmm. Right. on the October 17th. Make a motion to approve the October 17th, 2019 minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One abstention. Um, and now the Thursday, November 7th. to approve the November 7th, 2019 minutes uh, with uh, noted corrections. Noted corrections. I second go. the motion. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, motion carries, one abstention. And Dana. Uh, yes, uh, licenses, permits, and vouchers. Okay. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number two zero G zero nine with checks one nine seven four three through one nine seven seven eight in the amount of one hundred eighty thousand one hundred eighty dollars and eighteen cents. One eight zero one eight zero one eight. Sorry. I noticed too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's wild. Um, payroll warrant, no, also payroll warrant number 20-10 uh, for payroll from October 27th, 2019 through November 13th, 2019 in the amount of $39,525.97. Second Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, the town administrative report, Dana. Yes, well, I have a few things I'd like to talk to you about. Um, I'd like to just give you an update on a lot of loose ends that we have at the moment. Um, you may know about them or you may not, um, but 
Um, we have the Colby Cemetery, which is a small cemetery off of Junction Road. Um, the abutting landowner contacted me last um, earlier in the spring and would like to donate a bit of land to straighten out the line of the cemetery. Um, he's, he's working on his um, estate plan. And so what we need to do, and, and we had talked about this with the Cemetery Commission, um, is to have it surveyed and then a deed would be drawn up and that would be it. We do not have to go to the um, DRB for that. Uh, that is, I'm waiting for Chase and Chase and Barry to do the survey, and um, that's where that is. Uh, the hazard mitigation plan that has been worked on, that plan is, we're very close to having it completed, I'm happy to say. Paul Luciano is our consultant on that. He will have a draft ready by December 5th, and that will give us a chance to look at it. He will come to your meeting on January 2nd. Um, and go over it with you. At that point, after everyone has a chance to look at it, make any suggestions or input on it, um, it would go to the state. usually takes a month or two to be approved, and it would also be made available to adjoining communities as per the state law. Lover's Lane Bridge, which has been closed since I guess this spring as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've been talking with the state about the best way to get that open. And we are of the opinion that we don't really need to go and do a full-scale engineering uh, work and, and bidding and so forth for that, that we might be able to use uh, there are three contractors in Vermont that they've provided the names for who have engineers on staff and they're also into construction. So I was going to make up a, um, an RFP for that to see because we really just need to have the deck replaced. Yeah. What three? Um, Winterset Construction yep. in, in uh, Lindenville, Blow and Cody in Morrisville, and Miller Construction in Windsor. Mm -hmm. And if you know of any others, I'll add them to the list. Um, I'm hoping that maybe we can get that late spring or summer yeah. open. Uh, Richardson Road culvert, which seems to go on and on, have a life of its own. Um, we're still working with the engineer on that, and I think with the winter weather, maybe it's come to a standstill. Last time I knew they were doing some extra borings around the area to get more information. I am going to be putting in an application to Better Roads for a grant. I did not get the grant through VTrans last year, even though Better Roads is somewhat VTrans, but I'm going to try them for the structures grant. That grant would be um, $60,000 if we're successful. The culvert estimate, and I'm hoping this is high, is $242,000. So. Um, uh, stormwater projects, you remember you had, uh, the town had stormwater projects and it narrowed it down to 20 projects that were worthwhile and then it got narrowed down to 10 and finally there were five that could get stormwater plans as part of the grant that through the um, regional planning. Um, the town office and the highway department plan is completed. Um, and right now, the other plans that are, that are planned are the um, elementary school, <coughs> the fire department on Payne Turnpike North, and Chimney Suite, that mall which is on the Barry Montpelier Road, there's Chimney Suite, subways in that building, and yeah, so uh, like a hairdresser store. and a pet store. Um, so right now, the school, um, they have had a plan, they've uh, made some comments, and it's being, the plan is being reworked. And, and also the school has, due to the fact that they've been restructuring and getting, getting together, that hasn't gone forward as quickly, but it's on their agenda to do. If 
fire department, they've been working with the fire department on the plan, and the chimney suite, um, they've been working with them. So I thought I'd let you know um, the plans are going forward, some more quickly than others. Um, at the last meeting, you had talked about working on the tax stabilization policy, mm -hmm. updating it, and I, I think that's great, and perhaps um, the committee that worked on it might be a good source to get that committee together to give us some suggestions. I guess I'm just throwing that out, what you think of that. Um, so, and update that. Um, town center designation, um, I guess we've discussed that, you know, about the planning board's request for a full-time position. Um, and again, we don't have the designation. We expect it's going to be applied for this next fall. Now, the town office stormwater project, not to be confused with the other stormwater projects, uh, and this is the construction of our plan. And there is expected an expected grant to pay for that construction available through the Regional Planning Commission, and it is expected to be available in the next six months. Um, town meeting, the pre-town meeting usually is held the night before voting. So it's usually on a Monday evening before voting. This year, the school is holding a meeting the night before town meeting, which means Rosemary has to be there. Um, and since she can't be at two places at once, we've scheduled the school for Saturday morning, the February 29th. The town meeting or the school meeting? The pre, the, the, I'm sorry, the scheduled one on the 29th at 10 o'clock is the pre-town meeting. Yep. And the Monday night meeting, which we usually have our pre-town meeting, the school is having, I guess, their yep. pre meeting. Um, which, which meant we had to pick another day. So we, we're going with that Saturday at 10 o'clock. The town report, the bid spec has gone out and we expect it to be back uh, next week, I mean, two weeks when you meet again to grant the bid. Um, the town report this year is only going to be the town and it will have basically half of what we're used to. Um, I spoke to you at the last meeting, um, the Public Works Committee is working on this Municipal Wastewater System Ordinance, and it's not complete, but I will mention it to you, they wanted me to make sure that you're aware that once, and I have told, I told Tom I wasn't going to present it to you till it was done, <coughs> when it was approved by them, and they're supposed to be talking about that on Monday, so. That's coming right along. Um, finally, I have a gentleman that contacted me, Smart Link Real Estate Specialist, who is looking to lease town land for a cell tower. And he didn't know where it was. And so I thought that was interesting. Um, so I asked him if he could send us a letter and tell us which town land he was thinking of and, and where it is. And I'm sure it's probably somewhere that might be the conservation land up on Irish Hill, however. Um, I'm waiting for that and just having. And at that point, when we get a letter, I'll come back to you and go forward with it, I guess. Uh, I do have a couple copies of the latest league, if you'd like to have one. It is exciting news. Thank you. Um, and I guess that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Uh, round table, Justin. Uh, won't be here for the next meeting. And at some point, not necessarily this time of year, but I don't, I don't know if the board would entertain discussion about maybe possibly changing the days that we meet. I don't know. Yeah, so that changed only because I had a child and Girl Scouts on Mondays. It's not Mondays anymore. So it could go back to Mondays. It's now, I think, I can't remember, just two students or one students. 
I'm flexible with changing the night. Sure. Okay. Uh, Joel, anything? No, thank you. Are you all done, Justin? Just that? That's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Virginia? Mm -hmm. uh, executive session? Yes, please. I move that we enter executive session to pursuant to 1 VSA 313-3A3 to discuss a personnel matter. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.